If I may give you the temporary results we have on accidents which occurred on this newly built road, and it is not even officially open, you will be shocked. In our data, we recorded 112 accidents from Yundum down to Senegambia, which involved 16 fatalities. And then the overall accident for this period, 2023, went over 1,210, of which 148 people, Gambians, lost their life and non Gambians. I don't understand the way government people are using this one. Sometimes you have a high court, you have two directions. You see other drivers coming directly on, on you. They feel they are doing right. Thanks to uh, the management also, I have seen crash barriers being installed from the airport Johnson. Meaning not everywhere a pedestrian is supposed to be crossing. It's all about um, National Road Authority today, the OIC road project right at the moment. So uh, right at the moment, uh, what we are going to urge to uh, all drivers who are going to drive through um, this OIC road project or anywhere in the Gambia, drive safely and make sure you be a very good a professional driver because the life that you are driving or the life that you are Save it, it might be yours tomorrow. So stay tuned and focus with Nice Gambia, Best Gambia, Beautiful Gambia. And then you will hear the National Road Authority, what kind of advice they will give uh, to the um, drivers all over the country. So the reason why you are here, um, and I, I need to state that, is that is together with yourselves, help us send this message across. In terms of appealing to our road users to use the road safely. Um, drivers need to be aware that they can only drive in one direction. As you can see, some of you can see, I'm sure using the road, you, sometimes drivers are driving in the opposite direction to move in traffic. That is unsafe for the drivers, for their passengers, as well as other road users. You may be driving safely on the road using the right part of the road to drive. For some reason, drivers are using the opposite direction to come. We are aware that the service roads that are supposed to be built as part of the Bartel Harding Highway are not yet built to paved standards, but they are still there for people to use. So if you want to use the um, road in the opposite direction, by all means, don't do that because it's not safe to do so, and you are not allowed also to do so, but the service road is available for you to use it. So please use the service roads to do those movements that you want to do to access the main Bartel Harding Highway. Um, so that, that's, a, that's another message we would like to get across to, 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 to people using the road. And we would rely on you as partners as well to drive this change and the, to spread the information around. We have plans in the NRA to embark on a major awareness and campaign for safety on our roads that is ongoing at the moment. And hopefully when it comes alive, um, you members of the press will be invited again where we will collaborate with you and some of you and i'm sure my team is working on that at the moment so that we start to educate people but now going to actually meet the people where they are so we'll go and meet the people where they are in their societies we'll use the media as well to help us on this and that will be a massive campaign with the police drivers union all other stakeholders so that people are aware on any platform that they use, we can try and reach them. And I hope you people will also help us to try and get that message across when we start this campaign to educate people better in, on using our roads. We hope to do this, hopefully before the Battle Harding Road opens to traffic. In the meantime, also we're trying to address the safety issues in terms of just informing drivers. And by that, I mean, you will see as of today, and I've just been speaking to the consultants and the contractors on, on site that we are trying to put in temporary road signs in terms of speed limits on the road so again drivers will understand that this road is built to a standard which is called exam standard for speed and there's a, what they call a posted speed so we're putting those posted speeds is what what you see on the road as speed limits so those are hopefully going in as i understand from today and not, if not today you'll see you'll soon begin to see these posted speed limits on the roads we are also trying with the contractor and, and explaining to them that we need temporary lane markings so that we can have lane markings on the road so that we can delineate traffic. So in, if you are in your lane, you stay in your lane until, unless what you are overtaking, when it is safe to do so. So hopefully with the lane markings, temporary they are because they are not the permanent ones that will come in, but it's a temporary that 
guides drivers as to which lanes you should be using. And hopefully with the speed limits in place, that will also help also drivers in terms of understanding what speeds they should be using and driving at when using these roads. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time, but what I want to do is give that opportunity to our stakeholders and our partners, the police, as well as the drivers union, and our own um, Bakarimani here to add some few words to what I've said. But I hope that message is clear. Uh, this is a press briefing, so it's not a time for question and answers from the press, mm -hmm. but it's mainly to get this message across to yourselves and to, to engage you and to ask of you to help the NRA to spread this message across. And I hope as Gambians and also as an enthusiast, young, 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 young um, Gambians, um, you will also be um, agreeing with me that it's your responsibility to spread the message of safety on our roads. And I hope when you go back to your various media houses, you will publish this today. And I'm looking forward to seeing this published um, in your various medias. I'm, I'm not too much a media guy myself, but um, I've got, I'm on a few platforms which are relevant and I hope I can see some of your uh, messages across there. So without um, much um, taking your time again, um, um, I will hand over to um, my um, colleagues here, the Drivers' Union, the police, as well as um, um, Bakari Mani to add on that. May I just say again, as I said, it's a press briefing. So it is nothing to do with Operation Player the Roads at the moment, although that is something that is that we are stakeholders and we actively engage on that as well. But um, Bakari Mani will not be saying anything on uh, Operation Safe uh, <laughs> Clear the Roads today. Um, it will be mainly on highway safety. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Yes. Thank you so much, MD. And uh, of course, thank you so much for those remarks. Like our MD Radley said, um, road safety is everyone's business. Yes, we are an authority. Um, but we are, of course, ought to be reminded people how they should save themselves while driving on the road. But it's also our responsibility also to also be driving, of course, uh, carelessly and safely on our roads. Now, I will now invite um, the uh, Commissioner for Mobile Traffic, uh, Lamy Kikoli, to also throw a few words. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the Managing Director of the National Road Authority, his Deputy Senior Officers, the President of the Transport Union here, my friend and my co-worker, um, Mr. Mani. Um, uh, uh, back to you, the journalist, my friend, as I always call you, reliable source. I thank you very much for having me here. On behalf of the Inspector General and the Senior Management of the Gambia Police Force, I am invited here just to throw lights, as the MD said, to give information so that people will learn how to use this highway that is under construction. If I may give you the results, the temporary results we have on accidents which occurred on this newly built road, and it is not even officially open, you will be shocked. In our data, we recorded 112 accidents from Yundum down to Senegambia, which involved 16 fatalities. And then the overall accident for this period, 2023, went over 1,210, of which 148 people, Gambians, lost their life and non Gambians. So actually, this is a concern, as I always say. We are concentrating on other dealers to fight those diseases and ignoring the road crash or the road safety. I believe we should come together. Being a journalist, being a strict older like NRA or the police, to come together and make sure that we fight this pandemic. I may call it a pandemic. Because if we are to bring together today a disease that kills over 148 in an year, greater than the accidents, we might, but going to be very little. And even in the world, 
the road crisis and the road fatality rank at the eight elements of killers in the world, road crashes. And Gambia, we are marked by eight positions out of the, 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 in the world war when you bring in records. So, therefore, this is a timely call. This is a forum where we should inform our drivers, we should inform the pedestrians. One thing that is gone down in the past 2023 is head-to-head -head accidents. The president of the transport union is here, where vehicles will meet head-to-head. -head. So meaning the drivers in the past year, they knew, or they were the cost, because as MD said, these are man-made accidents, overspeeding, reckless driving, careless driving, human behavior, drink and drunk, mechanical defeats, accident was just happened in two weeks back, where two brothers died, six year old and one year old. Just imagine how those people will be tomorrow. So actually, the invitation which was extended to the IGP we receive it with proud, so has to inform the people. Even the result that I'm saying here today, the IGP is yet, because we are yet to compile everything. I just tap this thing, so that for public consumption to know that this briefing is very, very great and important. Like if we are to compare last year, 2022-2023, we had about 124 accidents. The total accident, whether minor, major, fatal. And this year we have 110 accidents, major, fatal, or whatever. But when it comes to fatality, the death, this year is higher. So actually we need to uh, behave well. We need to observe roadmarks, particularly when I say roadmarks, that is the lines on the road, the, 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 the traffic signs, those are the speed limit, no overtaking, sharp ahead, animal crossing areas. These are very key because they're giving you directive, they are guiding you. These signboards, just this is an information that we go across to all drivers. The signboard is there representing a police officer or an NRA officer directing you to say slow down. And they are backed by the Constitution, by the Act. It is under Section 84, 1 in bracket. If you violated the police officer on the road, it's as equal as if you violated. Uh, 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 a signboard on the road. Because section 84, A in bracket, that is the police officer, physically standing. 84, one in bracket, that is the signboard standing. And they are backed by the traffic rules and an act. So this message, just to give you, our NRA people, they are trying they're constructing, they're putting on all the security features. It is now left to us to observe. And we will say drivers, many people think that these commercial drivers. No, it's across the board. If you listen to Peter's radio yesterday, somebody was just analyzing accidents. He took the blame on private sector and the government uh, 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 drivers that they don't observe the traffic signboard, they put on tinted glass, they don't, they give disrespect to the police officers, and then so on and so forth. I have an audio. But this briefing is across the board. We are not pointing finger on any. When we say accident, it's across the board. Government drivers do involve in an accident fatality. Private vehicle involved in an accident fatality, whilst commercial vehicle. So, attitudinal change is here very important. Let's change our attitude and the life we save could be 
our own life or the life of our families or friends. On that note, I thank you, sir. MD. Yes, thank you so much. I can say it. it's well overdue. Thank you, MD. Mr. Suleiman and the old colleagues from National Authority with my able uncle, I'm Kim Koli, Alcalo Kim Koli. I think it's very important to come together as a team to work together to prevent road accident in this country because we are all stakeholders on this. Together, we can make things different. So if NRA takes this more responsibility to invite the stakeholders to discuss about issues, it's welcoming remarks. On behalf of the GTU, General Transport Union, we committed to work with the NRA to make sure to engage our people regarding how to use the road. Because as I said, we have a road code, highway code, we have a traffic act. So any driver, that's your responsibility to, to, to follow that due process. Feeling to do so, police can come and do their work. But as the MD said, the 1995 percent of accident is human behavior, including drivers, sometimes roads, sometimes even the police or the general public. So together, let's work together and make sure it makes things different. Because we are all a victim of accidents. We all lose our families, our money, our, our properties on the road accidents. So what we can do, let's come together. Let's stop the blame games. It's Mr. A or Mr. B. We can work together. You are the cause of accident. I'm the cause of accidents. Based on our behaviors. So let's try to change our behavior, starting from us. The way we are using the road. The ways we are driving a vehicle. The ways we are using our mobile phone, even our roads. These are all contributing factors. So I think media participation is very important so that we can send the message across and use our platforms, engage. Sometimes I say Gambia, we are very useful to discuss with politics in our, our platforms, but in, forget important issues affecting our life daily basis, live road accidents. In 2020, I record from Kim Koli, 143, 48 people dead. That is a calamity. So we, we expect new roads, high traffic. We expect in this current issue, we expect more accidents. So we, we all need to work together to prevent it. I was discussing with Mr. Sumari last week. I said, I understand, I don't understand the way government people are using this road. Sometimes you have a high court, you have two directions. You see other drivers coming directly on, on you. They feel they are doing right. If you start stop just because they will even, you know, fan words. So I think the police have a role here to play. Let's make sure that we have a good laws. Let's implement according to the latter. Only that can make things different. This Muslim asymptom, if you want to follow it, it can cause more calamity in our roads. Tomorrow, who's going to be a victim? Nobody knows. We are a protocols. But we, will, we, will, we, will, we are committed as a union to work with all the sectors, including national authority, to make sure our roads are safer. And I see the previous years, we see this, the, the road signs, they are starting installing in a highway. That is very important. That's the direction who will guide the drivers. But if driver didn't know, that also is the question. But I think we will take it in other steps. So that any stakeholders, involved, not only at NASA, including central government, they have a role to play here. Including the ministries, the way they design our policies. Including we, we driver, the way we use our roads. The roads, including the police, the way they operate, including you, the way you use our roads. We all have a stake to play. So if you come together, we make things work together. We can make things different. We can go below the rate we are we are, we are, we are being recorded. So thank you so much. I think it's important. Inshallah, we play our part. We'll try. We'll continue engaging our drivers. Make sure that we have safer roads in our, our country. Thank you. Good morning to you all, uh, the press. Uh, good morning to uh, my management um to the md um national Rules authority the dmd um Banit Tayo, Palo, Abubakal. i'm home today thank you so much for coming in full force the media um things are changing and things are changing positively um when i say things are changing i mean the national Rules authority um, um this is force of its kind um, if I can remember, the National Rules Authority coming out uh, fully to take responsibility of our own creation. Uh, we've been building roads in this country. 
Um, uh, we now we what we are doing we still continue building roads in this country, but we are bringing varieties of roads. Um, if we introduce in new varieties, it's our responsibility as an authority to explain it uh, to teach um, the road users the type of road that we are bringing. This is its fourth kind. Um, the, um, we have in a freeway, some will call it a um, motor road. Um, it's different from a an highway. And uh, they said all free roads um, are highways, but not all highways are free roads. Um, and a highway and a free road, they are similar, but they are different. A free road start from more than one lane, and a highway also start from more than one lane. This is a three lane we're talking about here. We are talking about safety. We are concerned. We brought you this kind of road into this country. It is our primary responsibility to teach you how to use this road. And it's very, very unfortunate you know, we cannot fold our hands and say the road is under construction. And the purpose is being divided because it's uh, turning to become a, a dead trap for our, our, our citizens, which is a concern. And the government is not spending millions on roads for it to turn to be a dead trap for its citizens. And that is unacceptable. That's why quickly, thanks to you, money, uh, thank, thanks to you, the National Roads Authority coming up um, this is very timely to call for this um, press briefing. And uh, the purpose for you coming here is to help us send the message out. And even though the road is under construction, but that, there are laws governing. And if it continues the way it is, it's better we close the road. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we, we let it until it's finished completely when all everything inclusively will be in signages you know streets and everything in the directions you know lanes provided you know but the safety starts at home vehiculars i mean i'm talking about the drivers um safety start at home before you even get to your steering you should check all four tires and practically and safety how to um, check that one, we all know a coin. It starts with your tires first. If they worn out, is the coin. You use a coin and put it vertically and horizontally. If it is not, if you bend it like this, if it's not going, your tire is gone. Because when you put it vertically on that straight holes, it should hold. When you pull it like this, it should hold. Meaning your tires are intact. And if you equally put it in vertically, it's the same. But when you put it like that, it, it fall. you put it down, it falls like this, your tires are worn out, practically. I will believe all drivers, all road, um, all vehicle owners are supposed to know this. Start with your tires first. Tires dis disappoint. And the time they disappoint you, you will say, man, I bought a new tire. But how many of us can buy new tires in this country? New tires are very expensive. We only bought, you know, dead tires. So the grips are very important here. We are concerned our roads, this road, this is battle hardened. It has only few access out and coming in. And this, this is why it's different from the uh, highway. And that's why when you start from Sting Corner, ah, sorry, uh, airport, AU Johnson, that is the feeder. And normally, the free, free, freeways doesn't have traffic lights. Freeways are not coming with traffic, traffic lights. And they are not coming with pedestrians physically crossings. You don't see them mark, but it's overhead pedestrian crossings. These speedways, this, um, this traffic sign is when you are coming in, when you are joining. Yeah, that's supposed to be a traffic control, traffic system to say to you are. But the moment you are in a free, freeway, you observe safety and the protocols, the laws governing. You stick to your lane above 80. Free, freeways normally is 
most of them they reach to 80s and above this it depends on the design so if you are speeding you you will not expect you to be on the first lane that is not a issue that's that lane is less than 80 or even less than 60. and you have the second lane in the middle but the first lane the third lane is the speed that is the speed lane and not heavy trucks supposed to be flying on that the third lane no buses no trucks first and second that's where they're supposed to start that is the heavy trucks heavy vehicles so before the laning tanks so uh, the management they said um both contractor and the consultant have been consulted and they'll they, they'll be working on the temporal uh laning meaning the markings and also we'll be seeing signages speed controls before we before the road will be finished so people in this country we give traffic to the left a roundabout he said everybody use it the way you want it the roundabout he give traffic to the left and it's, it's, it's as that if you observe rules on the road i mean johnson's you don't um the roundabout we don't need police officers to be there to control the signaling no the roundabout itself is a police officer it helps you it tells you what to do who's supposed to go in who's supposed to wait but this is a continuous process that will be the um sensitization part advocacy sensitization and the uh, the educative type uh part all will be coming uh, we work in the safety department and the entire management working on um that very soon we'll hit the road and all of you the media you will be um, informed in helping us to make make sure our roads especially batting harding is safe we cannot build a road and the road is not a safe road if the road is not safe no vehicle will be safe no pedestrians will be safe so this one to make it we we, we don't want to take your time here but the most important one we have to obey we have to obey the rules on this one this is totally different some will say yes when you start at um airport johnson is only yes it's a freeway it's not a highway and the freeway it, 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 this road has three phases and we are the second phase the third phase is coming with the service service route he said it that is where currently we are saying the diversion when they were making routes those are the sideways they'll be developed thanks to uh, the management also i have seen crash barriers being installed from airport johnson meaning not everywhere a pedestrian is supposed to be crossing i mean in normal senses we don't even have to put these barriers everywhere but because the the, the service lanes and service service routes are not being constructed we are coming with this one to so help not everywhere people are supposed to be crossing we cannot be putting blame on only the drivers here the people must know where to be crossing and nra we should take lead we are taking lead that's why we're putting on those class barriers so there will be a temporary designation of places where people are supposed to be crossing we'll open crossing and we'll put temporary crossing points but not every that also has a law you cannot come an individual this is a, this is a heavily high traffic road you cannot just come and say yes this is where it's provided for so we need to come back as gambians and change for good the country is moving and is forcefully i mean taking everyone by force to move with the development this is 21st century we cannot be crawling so our roads please help us to tell people uh the road users how to use this road temporarily it's still under construction but we are doing all effort we are not sitting down and falling our hands to say we wait until it's finished no that's why we call this a press briefing and people should know we are taking our responsibility fully and telling you it's still under construction let's be mindful the data briefly what commissioner is giving us is this this is this is very serious people are dying every day 
head collision. Why are we traveling in that that direction? You have an option to go down. If you're living in Bijiro and you you want to get to your place, no need you to climb up if you are going the direction, the different direction. Get down to that uh, gravel road and get to your house safely. Because if not, you are for, you are now going to be forced to go up to Senegambia, make a turn there and come back here. If not, if you go head collision, the police we are ready. Now, no joke. If any vigula is found to cheat the traffic, you'll be dealt with. That's why we call for this. And let's all um, come together and make our road safer. And the death rate will be, we cancel the death rate. Accident cannot be avoided completely, but we minimize as much as we can. Crashes on the road are unavoidable, but we minimize. What we are fighting here is no death on our roads. Until we come together as Gambians, and thank you so much for coming, press. We hope, and this will, this will not be the last time NRA coming um, to, to share this kind of information with the public. We keep doing this, and we, 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 we pray um, to the management, National Road Authority, um, that we uh, having this kind of uh, briefing here and there because like I said, the sensitization part is, uh, is ongoing, even though we have everything. It's our responsibility, every, every now, here and there, to come out and tell people, to talk to people how to use our road. Remember, it's a variety, new variety that we introduce. So it is our soul to keep reminding or teach, advocate for safety on our roads. Thank you so much once more. And I, 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 I apologize if I have gone long. And thank you, management MD, and your uh, able team here for coming up with this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mane. Thank you, um, Douglas Junior Marcis here. Thank you, King Koli, representing IGP of police here. Um, thank you for all your advice. And uh, and I'm sure it's, the message is taken very well by all of you. It's all about road safety. But I don't think um, I want to end this um press briefing without just giving you a brief update on Battle Harding Highway. Um, there um, has been um, concerns from the public and we are aware of this and we ourselves as NRA are aware of this. There is what we call a Battle Harding Phase 3. So on all these major infrastructure projects, it's not just one phase of a project that ends it. So we continually, continuously try and improve it in terms of every aspect of the function of the highway itself. So there is a phase three that we're thinking of coming up and that's being discussed at the moment at the very highest level. And we're engaging funding agents as well. And again, there are a few areas that we want to concentrate on as part three of this Battle Harding Highway. The very first thing is the pedestrian crossings. And as you can see, um, crossing six lanes of traffic is really hard for a lot of people, um, even able-bodied people find it difficult to do this, much more the physically um, not able people. So these are people with children crossing, people with um, severe um, handicap in terms of mobility. Um, so we're thinking about those crossings. So at the moment, when the road is finished, we'll have temporary crossing areas. And as Mr. Mane mentioned, there are safety barriers going across the entire length of the road so that we can concentrate crossings at specific designated positions. So you cannot cross the road everywhere that you want, but in specific places that is safe to do so. And there will be measures at these locations to ensure pedestrians cross safely. That's what we'll be getting when the road is open. But as a phase three, we'll be thinking about pedestrians crossing at a different level than at grade level. So that's something we're thinking about, and that could include pedestrian footbridges. We're also thinking about service road. So in terms of the service road, which is the unmade road that is on either side of Battle Harding Highway that you see at the moment, the, the, the gravel road or what the, you know, the unmade road that's not paved on either side, which is mock at the moment. 
that that's supposed to be the service road and that again because we have a lot of properties and commercial activity along Patil Harding normally roads like this would be served by service roads that's really the main function of servicing the premises which is residential premises as well as the commercial properties along the the highway so that service road was meant to be built as part of this network but again is, is now in phase three and we're thinking about it and it will be built inshallah with time which would definitely reduce pressure on the main road itself and more importantly provide access to the residences and the property and the commercial activities along this road a third component of what we're thinking of in terms of the phase three battle harding is the connectivity connectivity being people being able to go where they want to go or being able to access the road from where they are coming from. That is important. As you can see, there are roundabouts at the moment, there are flyovers as well. But we're thinking about, for example, Bijilo Junction being opened up again, but in a safe manner. So, so we'll be thinking about those. One thing to bear in mind is that on roads like this, people have to have be able to sacrifice a few kilometers either way to reach a safe crossing um, turning point rather than opening up all the road to different, different junctions. That would reduce the operational efficiency of the road, which is not the function of this type of road. But connectivity is another thing we'll be thinking about in terms of phase three, that is providing more access and connection to Battle Harding Highway. There is also concern about drainage, and I'm sure a lot of people talk about that. So in terms of where do the, does all the water be create or as runoff from this carriageway on the which is the paved road that you see at the moment where does it go where does it where is the outfall of this drainage system so we don't want to build roads that get flooded so that's another aspect we're talking about and discussing as battle harding phase three and last but not least is the controls and enforcement aspects of battle harding highway so on a road like this we expect speed cameras to help us with our enforcement and uh, help the police. Mm -hmm. That's being being thought about and we're thinking about it. And of course, we want to move to our next stage of this, which is intelligent transport systems, okay. which they call ITS. Mm -hmm. So we'll be linking um, onto Battle Harding Highway these kind of facilities where drivers will be, for, be informed of congestion areas, areas of accidents happening and traffic being diverted onto alternative routes. So this is another thing in terms of technology being introduced into our road systems, which is called inter intelligent transport systems. And we're talking about that also as part of Battle Harding Phase 3. So just to assure the public that some of these concerns we are aware of as an institution, and we are addressing them, we are talking about it at the highest level in terms of government, as well as funding. So with that, I think we've said um, a lot today, and hopefully this is just the beginning of our engagement with yourselves as the press, and we'll be continuing these press briefings and information as we go up, uh, along with Bartel Harding and, of course, all our roads in the country. Another area which I perhaps want to talk about here also before I end is the concerns we are getting on our Trans-Gambia Highway, which is... Um, attracted a bit of publicity which is not very good at the moment in terms of trucks um, involved in accidents on our trans gambia highway which is the um, highway on the senegambia um, connection um, connecting senegal from one side to the other across the gambia and the senegambia bridge as well so there have been fatal accidents in patalinding and on soma mm -hmm. recently which we the authorities are aware of and we introducing some temporary measures again these are all driver behavior they don't stop our understanding at the moment is that they involve vehicles that are not registered in the Gambia. But again, this is, again, I wish to end, convey this message to you, King Koli, to the IGP, and I'll be talking to him as well. We may have to look into that and see how we can better enforce and control um, um, speeding drivers along that road. But as a temporary measure, NRA is uh, taking some measures as we speak at the moment to try and put some temporary measures that could calm traffic ar across those areas. And as and when we get these accidents coming in, we'll be looking at them on a side-by-side -side basis and trying to deal with them as much as we can within the powers we've got. But again, uh, I think there'll be close collaboration with the police here in terms of trying to enforce, because the key, the key thing there is enforcement. Drivers are doing this and then not stopping and killing people as well. 
Um, so with that, I think I would like to probably draw this press briefing to a close. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for coming. And we hope we can um, have you as trusted partners who would work with us um, in a collaborative manner to ensure our roads in this country stay safe for all users. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, Daddy, once again. Thank you so much uh, to uh, Commissioner King Kole. Thank you so much to our Deputy Marine Director. Thank you so much to our road safety engineer. And of course, thank you so much uh, to the President of the Gambia uh, Transport Union. And thank you so much to my bosses, of course, at the NRA. And a big thank you to, of course, my colleague, the media, uh, for, of course, blessing this open service. We believe that uh, the message is uh, that is being sent across and being absorbed. And we are also expecting it to be, of course, disseminated accordingly. Thank you so much. And now we are going to put it in place.